Hey guys, how are you all? My name is Harsha Devedi friends and I welcome you back to my video. So in this video friends, I will be talking to you regarding what are the limiting factors of an ecosystem. So in order to tell you what are the limiting factors, see the basic definition of limiting factors is that for example inside an ecosystem. Now inside an ecosystem a lot of species thrive. So the population of the individuals of those species, they increase and decrease. So what ever factors which are involved in affecting the growth of a population of a species in a particular ecosystem those factors are limiting factors that is the individuals of the population are growing how much they will grow how much they will be controlled how they will be controlled all of these things will be decided by the limiting factors okay so in order to understand this concept you need to understand what is exponential reproduction what is geometric reproduction and we are going to understand one more thing what is pulsed reproduction now this pulsed reproduction is a part of geometric reproduction only friends so this complete details we are going to study in this thing friends uh, before starting i would like to tell you that this video is in english if you want to watch the hindi version of the video the link of that is given in the description box below also friends if you want to follow me the link of my instagram profile is given in the description box below now the very first thing which we need to understand is that the rates of growth of a population population grow at two types of rate one is the geometric rate of population growth second is the exponential rate of population growth now geometric rate and exponential rate of population growth will take place when obviously the availability of resources is high or you can say there is an unlimited availability of resources however unlimited availability of resources is always a myth friends because for example if the amount of population is less if the population density is very less so to them it may feel that the resources available are unlimited but yes when the population will increase when it will come above a threshold they will clearly feel that the availability of resources is less for example during 1750s during 1700s 1800s the global community used to think that yes the population is less and the amount of availability of the resources in the nature is very high but today in 2019 you can clearly see friends that as the population has increased beyond the threshold as the amount of extraction the cutting of trees deforestation everything is increasing at such a huge pace that we are clearly feeling that the availability of resources is not limit unlimited it is going to finish at some amount of time for example water the availability of water and everything is limited friends so we need to understand this factor okay so how this geometric and exponential rate of population growth occurs see geometric population growth occurs through pulsed reproduction and exponential population growth occurs continuously now you need to understand what's the difference between geometric rate of population growth and exponential rate of population growth obviously the exponential rate of population growth is much higher than the geometric rate of population growth but on the basis you can say that geometric and exponential rate of reproduction or population growth is very high now how does the geometric rate uh, rate of population growth occurs it happens through pulsed reproduction and exponential through continuous you need to understand this for example we talk about humans friends now humans can reproduce at any point of the year in any season in any environment so obviously humans can produce babies round the year there is no restriction on time availability or other conditions on their reproduction season mating season and growth season okay so this is continuous availability of reproduction season for the humans so obviously the rate of the population growth of humans will become exponential which has been in the last many decades whereas for some species there are certain limitation for example if you talk about this deer species friends so when we talk about this deer species deer species has a constrained mating season its reproduction season is limited it is not unlimited for example deers can reproduce and mate for a particular time period of a year they cannot do it all year round okay so that is why there will be an increase in the growth rate of the population of deer but obviously that population growth rate will be limited it will be a bit constrained more than the exponential rate so in this manner you can say 
that the exponential reproduction rate is much higher than the geometric reproduction rate okay friends now obviously friends both the exponential rate of growth and geometric rate of growth will happen when two or three conditions are fulfilled the very first condition which we are going to talk about low population density if the population densities are low obviously there is scope for a more number of individuals so obviously population growth grow then the environment is very favorable okay so environment is favorable and there is an unlimited or very high availability of resources so there is a high availability of resources unlimited availability of resources favorable environment and low population density so in these three conditions obviously the rate of growth of the population will be very high but you need to keep one thing in mind that despite there is a geometrical growth of uh, rate of reproduction or exponential growth of rate of reproduction the population cannot always grow indefinitely there will a time come when the rate of the growth of population will be limited for one factor or the other so at some point of time the population growth will slow down the population size will tend not to increase it will start limiting itself and when it will happen see when initially these population densities are less then obviously it feels to us that there is a need for higher number of individuals as the resources are high but as soon as the population growth takes place when there are a lot of individual available then initially those resources which were feeling very high to us now they would not feel that much high to us okay so that is why in that scenario when the population will grow up up uh, you know above a, bill, uh, a certain threshold the population growth rate will first slow down and then it will generally stop so this is the difference between geometric and, and exponential growth friends and in order to understand the mechanism of the rate of population growth of a species we need to understand one thing which is carrying capacity now what is carrying capacity and what is ecological depth that i will be discussing in a separate video for the time being you need to know friends that carrying capacity of a particular ecosystem of a particular species is that amount of individual of that particular species that can be sustained by an ecosystem and the carrying capacity phenomena says that if the number of individual overshoots the carrying capacity of that particular ecosystem then the population growth rate will either slow down or it will stop okay friends so carrying capacity at a particular amount of food available habitat available water available resources available other necessities available carrying capacity of a particular ecosystem of a particular species is limited it is not unlimited that is for example if there is a species it is growing at a particular rate now if the ecosystem has the capability of whole, you know handling 1000 individuals of a particular species so obviously that 1000 will become the carrying capacity and as soon as that threshold of 1000 is crossed obviously the rate of growth of that particular species in that particular ecosystem will first slow down and then eventually stop and this is what is happening today in the case of humans friends humans initially in 1800s 1750s they were less they grew and they over crossed over shoot their carrying capacity and now the rate of growth of human population is slowing down and eventually after some time it will stop because we are much our much high above our nature's carrying capacity okay so this is one thing friends so as soon as the carrying capacity of a particular ecosystem is crossed obviously the birth rate will become equal to death rate after some time and population growth will become zero because carrying capacity is the maximum load that an environment can sustain of a particular species so i hope this thing became clear to you friends now we will talk about limiting factors now when we are going to talk about population limiting factors friends so these limiting factors can be classified into a certain number of groups so i'm going to tell you about the classification of these limiting factors the very first classification is density dependent limiting factor and density independent limiting factor so first we are going to talk about the density dependent limiting factor so density dependent limiting factors will include diseases competition predation how diseases obviously if the density of a particular population in a limited amount of area is going on increasing and increasing and increasing so obviously 
they are going to scramble for resources diseases may increase and the increase of those diseases will limit their population growth for example today you can see there are many communicable and non communicable diseases spread in the environment one reason for the spread of diseases can be said to be high population growth because we have already exceeded our carrying capacity so obviously the number of diseases are also going to grow which will tend to act as a limiting factor on the growth of our population then we talk about competition friends competition is very one big thing for example initially when the population density of a particular species was less then obviously there was no competition for resources and when there was no competition for resources obviously the rate of growth of population growth was high but what happened that when that same population density converted itself into a high population density what happened then friends then the same and individuals of that same species they would be fighting and competing among us themselves for the limited amount of resources available in the society because then the amount of resources are limited so in that case competition comes into play friends okay and this competition is not only between the individuals of a same species this competition is also between the individuals of different species for example suppose there is a natural resource say water so not only one species is competing for this water many species are competing for this water so the limited amount of water which is available in ecosystem individuals of many species will be competing for it so there will be inter species competition for that particular natural resource so that is also going to limit the population so these are factors that are going to affect the population growth and these are density dependent limiting factors now the density dependent limiting factors can be further subdivided into positive dependent density dependent factors and negative density dependent factors now what is a positive density dependent factor positive density dependent factor means that when the size of a population will increase then the limiting factors concentration will also increase so as soon as the population size is increasing the limiting of factors controlling the rate of that population increase are also increasing so these are positive density dependent factors and what are negative density dependent factors it simply means that when there are low population densities when the population density is less then the limiting factor will be highly active and as the population density is going to increase obviously the role of that limiting factor will decrease so this is a negative density dependent limiting factor okay so this was one thing friends so first we have talked about density dependent limiting factor now we are obviously going to talk about the density independent limiting factor now density independent limiting factor are generally said to be associated with abiotic elements and it is being said that density dependent limiting factors are generally associated with biotic factors now you very well know the difference between biotic and abiotic factors because i have already made a dedicated video on what this biotic factors of an ecosystem and what are the abiotic factors of an ecosystem friends so basically this density independent factors will include environmental stress catastrophe which is suddenly going to change the composition of an environment for example we talk about tsunamis for example we talk about the earthquakes friends so tsunami is also sort of earthquake that is movement of rocks beneath the ocean bed so obviously when earthquakes come when tsunami come they are going to cause a huge loss of life of the humans and also of the animals so this was not dependent upon the density of that particular population it happened because of an environmental stress then sometime monsoon season comes cyclone comes the heavy floods come for example the cyclone idai recently which came in mozambique so there were heavy rainfalls led to a loss of life in mozambique zimbabwe malawi and out uh, nearby south africa countries then in india also because of the cyclones or you can say because of heavy rainfall the concentration and the amount of volume of water in a particular river increases for example in the kosi river so things like this happen friends in the brahmaputra river so suddenly the river makes its shifting and causes flood so when these type of floods come they are also responsible for the loss of lives and animals so these are basically not directly dependent upon the biotic factors or on the density of a particular population of a particular species in an ecosystem so these are environmental stress which are also going to play a limiting role in the population density of a particular species so basically these are density independent factors 
फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ द न्यूट्रिएंट लिमिटेशन इज देयर इन अ पर्टिकुलर इन्वायरमेंट सो बिकॉज ऑफ दैट न्यूट्रिएंट लिमिटेशन द न्यूरिशमेंट टू द प्लांट्स एंड एनिमल्स इन दैट पर्टिकुलर एरिया विल बी लेस एंड दैट विल लिमिट देयर एबिलिटी टू रिप्रोड्यूस लिव लाइफ अ क्वालिटी लाइफ सो दैट इज ऑल्सो गोइंग टू अफेक्ट द लाइफ ऑफ दैट पर्टिकुलर प्लांट और एनिमल सो दिस इज ऑल्सो ऑफ सॉर्ट ऑफ यू कैन से डेंसिटी इंडिपेंडेंट फैक्टर सो दीज आर डेंसिटी इंडिपेंडेंट फैक्टर्स एंड दे आर जनरली सेट टू बी एबायोटिक दे डोंट हैव द इन्वॉल्वमेंट ऑफ लाइफ इन इट एंड बायोटिक फैक्टर्स आर जनरली डेंसिटी डिपेंडेंट फैक्टर्स सो दीज आर द टू क्लासिफिकेशन विच आई टोल्ड यू नाउ आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक टू यू सम डायरेक्ट एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ लिमिटिंग फैक्टर द वेरी फर्स्ट एग्जाम्पल आई हैव ऑलरेडी टॉक टू इन एन इन्वायरमेंट वीडियो बिफोर फ्रेंड्स द वेरी फर्स्ट थिंग इज दैट वेन वी टॉक अबाउट एवर ग्रीन रेन फॉरेस्ट सो वेन इन एवर ग्रीन रेन फॉरेस्ट सीड्स आर देयर इन द सॉयल दो सीड्स डू नॉट जर्मिनेट क्विकली वाई दे डू नॉट जर्मिनेट क्विकली डिस्पाइट ऑफ हैविंग गुड रेनफॉल वेन दो सीड्स गोज इन द सॉयल द सॉयल इज हैवी लीच हैवीली लीच वॉट डज लीचिंग मीन्स लीचिंग मीन्स दैट वेन आर एक्सेस अमाउंट ऑफ वाटर इज अवेलेबल मॉइस्चर इज अवेलेबल इन द सॉइल सो दैट मॉइस्चर आइदर सीप्स डाउन इन द ग्राउंड वाटर और फ्लोज टू सम अदर प्लेस विद द फ्लोइंग और सीपिंग डाउन इन द ग्राउंड वाटर इट ऑल्सो टेक्स अवे द न्यूट्रेंट्स विद इट एंड द वाटर एट एंड द सॉइल एट द सर्फेस इट इज लेफ्ट विद लेस न्यूट्रेंट्स एंड देन इट बिकम डिफिकल्ट फॉर सीड्स टू एक्सट्रैक्ट द न्यूट्रियंट्स फ्रॉम द सॉइल एंड ऑब्वियसली दे डू नॉट जर्मिनेट इजिली सो हेयर वॉट विल बी द लिमिटिंग फैक्टर इट विल बी द सॉयल therefore it is said that the quality of soil in an evergreen forest is very less okay similarly in an evergreen forest there is one more case that you know that evergreen forest are very dense trees are very high and there is a dense canopy of those trees so that dense canopy covers the complete above area and because of that sunlight is not able to reach the surface despite the fact that evergreen forest are normally formed in tropical areas and the equatorial area so their sunlight availability is there but despite the availability of sunlight their friends what happens that the light is not able to reach the surface now when the light is not able to reach the surface the germinated saplings they cannot go beyond a limit and here what becomes the limiting factor the light becomes the limited factor or the shade of the forest becomes the limiting factor there is one more particular example we are going to talk about lemmings lemmings are small rodents that live in arctic tundra arctic type of climate in greenland denmark norway so their lemmings grow now a study was done in lemmings the population of living in 1988 and 2002 and there was a pattern of the growth increase and decrease of the population of lemmings who feed on lemmings arctic fox snowy owl long tailed skua stoat feed on lemmings so what happened friends that initially the population of lemmings increased now when the population of lemmings increased the people eating it the animals eating for example stoat was eating lemmings so stoat suddenly saw that the availability of lemmings has increased so obviously when the availability of lemmings have increased so it is going to eat lemmings the stoat population is also going to grow and one point will come when the population growth of stoat will be greater than the population growth of lemmings and at that point of time the population growth of lemmings will stop the population of lemmings will decrease and because of the less availability of lemmings to stoat at that point of time the population growth of stoat will also stop and the population growth of and the population of stoat will also decrease so this is the pattern in which the population is increasing and population is decreasing okay friends so this is also one limiting factor you can say okay then there are many more limiting factors general limiting factors these are very specific examples for example droughts floods i have already talked to you climate there are certain species which can survive only in warm climate so they will not be able to survive in tundra taiga type of climate similarly there are many species which are able to survive only in cold climates so they will not be able to survive in tropical and equatorial climates similarly predator prey relationships if the prey population is increasing then the predator population will increase and obviously if the predator population will increase then the prey population will decrease and obviously the decrease in prey will also lead to the decrease in predator population this i explained you through the lemming thing lemming stoat wild skua then human encroachment and pollution pollution is obviously responsible friends pollution is goes on biomagnification bioamplification leading to different diseases which acts as a limiting factor then human encroachment on forest is destroying the habitat of many different species which again acts as a limiting factor friends so these are different examples of limiting factors limiting factor is anything which is involved in limiting the number of individuals in a particular area of a particular species so this was everything about limiting factor friends i hope this video was helpful to you if it was really helpful kindly subscribe to the channel and keep studying friends goodbye